Palo Alto, California. It's The Q at Pier 2.0. Brought to you by the Pier 2.0 Foundations. Learn, connect, and grow. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone here at uh, The Cube, here live in Silicon Valley in Palo Alto. We're here covering the Pier 2.0 Foundation inaugural conference where the brightest minds get together to talk about the future of this new grassroots organization around peering. Peering is the critical linchpin between networks, autonomous systems, DNS, all that stuff that's going on in the plumbing um, is really, really critical and the people who built the internet are here setting the agenda and the conversations. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Jeff, um, great, great venue here in Palo Alto. The beginning of the Cube Silicon Valley March, official launch coming in September, but again, content rich environment. Not a big fanfare, inaugural event for Pier 2.0. Um, numbers aren't off the charts by conference standards, but the quality of the people here is phenomenal. We're talking about people who are A1 A in community, a1 in building out networks, A1 in freedom. These guys are the, 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 the players, real tech athletes. Yeah, and down in the weeds, right? Keeping, keeping the lights on, keeping the internet moving. Uh, even saying that really, it was kind of broken and we've been working on band-aids and, and bailing wire for the last 15 years and in the meantime, we've seen the rise of SaaS, the rise of mobile and the rise of a lot of, of trends that are putting more and more demand. So, a little bit new to MySpace, John, and I'm excited to be at a Palo Alto event um, it's always fun to be at an inaugural event. There's a certain amount of buzz, there's a certain amount of hype, there's not a lot of sponsor activity going on. You know, people are really here to learn. And, and I was also very impressed by a very focused and deliberate attempt uh, at knowledge transfer from the older generation who basically built the stuff and are keeping the lights on to a newer generation that are going to be handed the baton and take it from here. So I thought that was great. You know, we're all about sharing the knowledge on theCUBE, we're all about providing insight. Uh, so, so that really dedicated um, effort, I thought, was admirable. But I wanted to ask you, you've kind of played in the space, you, you know a lot more about networking than me. What are some of the surprises that you heard today? Things you didn't expect to hear, things that maybe did support some of your assumptions? Um, I'm really um, surprised by how fast the peering concept that Bill Norton has been talking about for a long time. He has a, a blog or a website, I guess. And now he has a book. Dr. Peering. He's got, He's got the, the book on his 14th edition. Um, real advocate and participant in the, in the industry. Um, obviously co-founder of Equinix. We also, had, we also had Jay Adelson on. Great interview with him. 30 minute content, talking about dig, the future, all this stuff. I mean, but the acceleration of, of pressure that the network guys are feeling from the innovation um, from the rest of the market. And, and this is interesting, I asked Pat Gelsinger, who was then the president of EMC at the time, years ago on theCUBE, four years ago, where's the innovation going to come from? Traditionally the networks enabled innovation on top of it, but now the model seems to flip around. Is, is innovation going to be dictated to the network from the top of the stack? And that is ultimately the big story, in my opinion, looking back at the generations of change, is if you go back to the early days of these guys, it was always, let's move up the stack. Well, that's happened. The stack is fully robust. With cloud, the stack actually is driving down to the network. So what's happening is they're moving up and they're moving down and the network is feeling the pressure to innovate. So this is an accelerant to that. And IIX is the startup that validates this space. Uh, $10 million from NEA. Uh, Kitu, great partner at NEA, put the money in on this one. And really that demonstrates the viability and the business opportunity around this opportunity. At the same time, the community model of governance continues to play in the ethos of, of volunteerism, working with the community. Again, I like, what the, I like what's going on here. Yeah, very impressive. I mean, Rich talking about, you, know, you would think that there would be just all kinds of people grabbing those last IP4 addresses and holding on to them and putting them in a marketplace and, and trying to arbitrage the opportunity of the shortage, but he said, you know, really the community has self-governed very well. They've extended them a little bit further than, than they expected. That said, uh, get your six addresses set up quickly because one big customer could come in and wipe out the balance of the inventory. But I thought that was impressive. And again, it just continues to reinforce that software is eating the world. Autom more and more automation is being put into the software so that the people involved can do higher value, uh, higher value activities, higher value uh, things. Uh, and really, it's, it's more this software eating everything. 
Well, theCUBE is all about getting the data and talking to tech athletes. You couldn't get a better event, Jeff, than Pier 2.0. Again, not a mainstream event, it's not on everyone's radar, but I'm guaranteeing you, this is kind of what it felt like at the Hadoop days early on. This is a game-changing trend. If you look at the future of content, you're looking about things like IP addresses. They're running out. <laughs> now you got to move to IPv6, a whole nother format that will scale service providers. Look at what happened with Netflix, with content. All these new content providers, social media, we're doing crowd chats, we're doing live video. This new normal is an omni-channel, omni-network approach. Peering is going to be critical, and I believe new algorithms, new technologies will be developed. It's a great opportunity to solve technical problems and create business opportunities. So I think this is an area that's going to be ripe for enabling wealth creation and innovation. Yep, and it's a great way to kick off our fall tour. So we've had a little bit of a break in the summer. The Cube's been kind of uh, taking a little bit of rest, preparing all the gear, and now, and now we're getting ramped up. This is a great way to kick it off again, kind of a pure educational foundation event. Next week the team will be in Boston at the HP Vertica uh, event. We've got VMworld just around the corner. So I encourage you to go to siliconangle.tv Take a look at the upcoming events, where we'll be. We try to be every place that's important. Uh, also encourage you to take a look at the beta release of our new mobile app. If you go to the Apple iTunes store, it's the Cube Mobile, uh, the Cube Mobile, and download the, uh, the alpha version of our mobile app. Let us know what you think. Uh, it's a great way to kick off, the, uh, kick off the fall, John. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Really excited to be here. Silicon, live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Stay tuned, go to siliconangle.tv, look for our next upcoming event. We'll, we'll be at our next event, stay watching, and of course, Ustream. Thanks a lot for watching, go to ustream.tv and keep us there. HP Vertica conference is up next week. We'll be live in Boston, Massachusetts, talking about big data and more and more and more extracting of the signal. We'll be back next week, stay tuned. <laughs>